Hey, welcome to Crafty Music Tips. I'm assuming that you're watching this video because you've just got yourself a bass amp and you're thinking, how the hell do I use it? Well, I'm gonna show you how. Now, if you're a guitarist as well, I've done another video on guitar amps, so you can check that out. But for now, let's get into the bass. It's only words. All right, we're nearly ready to start making noise, but first we need to know what is a bass amp. Now, a couple of the things I'm going to say might be really obvious to some, but if you're anything like me, it took me a long time to realize that, oh, so a bass amp needs to have a speaker, and sometimes you can buy them separately. Now, so the word amp is short for the word amplifier, which is an electronic device for increasing the amplitude of electric signals. Okay, so amplifiers are really different to speakers because speakers are transducers that convert electromagnetic waves into sound waves. Nerd! All right, all right. I know you want to get to the actual noise making, but we've got to talk about these first. What are these? Do you know? I know that you might think it's called the thumb holder, but no, they're called pickups because what they do is they pick up the sound, which means that they turn the acoustic energy into electric energy once they've picked it up. Kind of like what microphones do. Then the electrical energy needs to travel through one of these to go into the bass amp. And the reason why it needs to go into an amp first and not into a speaker is because the speaker needs power and the signal needs volume. You won't be annoying any neighbors without the extra volume that the amp can give. Now there's literally a huge amount of different amps and speakers that you can get your hands on. If you get what's called a combo, it's where you've got the amp and the speaker combined. By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet. If you're buying an amp on its own, it'll be called an amp head. And if you're buying a speaker on its own, it'll be called a cabinet. Okay, you still with me? <laughs> We're definitely gonna plug in and make some noise right now. Yeah. Okay, finally, so no more talking. Okay, maybe a little bit. I'm gonna plug in the bass and we're gonna talk about the different amp settings so that you can get a sound on your amp. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna use an actual real amp. I'm going to use one of the bass amps that comes with the Logic Pro X software. Let's check it out. So why would I use a digital representation of a real amp instead of an actual real one? Well. Basically, I can show you heaps of different types of amps and speakers just with the click of a button. Now, the first job is to neutralize the settings. Now, what that means is on the bass, my go-to is I just turn up all of the knobs all of the way. Then on the amp, I turn up everything right in the middle, 12 o'clock. Okay, so there you go. I've got everything up on the bass and I've got everything to 12 o'clock on the amp. So why would I do that? Well, basically, it's just a really good go-to starting point. And then from there, you adjust accordingly, up or down. All right, so there you go. I've neutralized all of the settings. Let's hear what it sounds like. Now, it's very common to find two types of volume knobs on an amp. One is the amount of volume that's going into the amp, and the other is the amount of volume that's coming out of the speaker. So in this software amp of mine, the gain is the amount of volume that's going into the amp. That's with it halfway. What does it sound like? Three quarters. It sounds a little bit louder. But the more that you go up, it's pretty subtle on this amp. But usually what happens, the more pre-gain that you give it, you get more of a dirtier kind of distorted style tone. Right, so I've got gain back up to 12 o'clock. Now the volume knob that's controlling the speaker volume is called the master on this particular amp. So let's have a listen. definitely more of a volume change with that. Now this amp has the classic three controls for EQ. What EQ is short for, it's equalizer or equalization. What that means is the different types of frequency areas that you can be adjusting. So they're all set to the middle at the moment. This is what it sounds like. Now, if I turn the bass up, the bass is like another word for the lows, the lower area of the frequency spectrum. Oh, it sounds warmer. With more bass, with no bass. Sounds pretty thin. 
Now, the mids are, you guessed it, the middle area of the frequency spectrum. So take it away. If I crank it up. Now, the last of these controls is called treble, and now that's another word for high. It's like the clearer, higher area of the frequency spectrum. Here's normal. Here's lower. Here's cranked up. Now, on this particular amp, I've got some extra settings above the corresponding knobs in the EQ area. So with the bass, you've got lows. With the mids, you've got three different types of mids that you can either be boosting or cutting. And the high, you've got a boost and a cut, as well as a bypass for the treble higher sounding area of the frequency spectrum. Let's have a listen. So I'm going to boost both the bass and the low button. Here's normal. Here's a cut. Here's the first mid area. Is the second one. Sounds like the mid frequencies just increased a bit. Here's the third one. That's normal. Here's the boost. Yeah, the frequency is definitely higher, higher mid, and with it cut out. So just inspecting this high button here, it looks like you can only boost or cut. That's with the boost. That's with the cut. So double boost. Whoa, very clear sounding. And the double cut. Now the last setting on this amp is called a compressor. What that does is it just kind of squashes the higher volume amounts and it sort of boosts the lower volume amounts to make it a more similar sounding volume overall. So here it is without it. Now you can also just boost the overall volume with a compressor as well. That's definitely louder. Now if we turn the amount of compression up, and the gain starts to distort a little bit. But it feels like everything that I'm playing is basically exactly the same volume. Now everything in this video has been played on my Fender Jazz bass which has a certain sound to it. So that's going to affect what's coming through the amp. But what also I find really interesting is how the different speaker boxes and the different amp heads shape the sound. So we'll have a listen to a few different ones. Speaker box! So that's been using a 15 inch speaker. Here's a classic eight by 10. Sound characteristics are a bit different, but the volume would be very different if it was live. Here's another one. So what about the different amp head sounds? One we've been listening to is kind of like an amp egg. What's this one like? Ah, oh, cool. Sort of looks like a Mesa Boogie. Rockin'. Oh, this one looks cool. Interesting, hey? It's the same settings, except just because you've plugged it into a different type of amp head, it, the sounds are different. Every time we say goodbye, I die a little. 
Okay, so there you go. A bunch of different ways to navigate around your amp to get a bunch of different tones. Did you learn anything? Was it helpful for you? Let me know in the comments below. Now, Crafty Music Tips is available on a bunch of different social media platforms. Go out and follow me there. And if you found this video helpful, I've got a bunch of different videos that you can check out on this YouTube channel. Now, if all that's still not enough for you, I have a free gift to offer you. It's called Five Steps to Fast Improvement. Now, I don't know if you're anything like me, but I definitely have many times that I can think of in my past where I've just felt like I'm just going around in circles, chasing my tail, not improving in the way that I would like. So it's a free ebook where I give you the five steps that you need to follow because if you're chasing your tail like I was, well then it was because you're not clear about what it is that you need to do in order to improve. I hope that sounds helpful for you. I'll leave a link below, go click it. My name is Crafty. This has been yet another Crafty Music Tips video. I hope it's been helpful for you. I'll see you in another one really soon. Take care.